Hi everybody, and welcome to the studio. It's a windy day, so we're still outside painting. And what I want to do today is I want to share with you guys the Sakura Blossoms at midnight. It's one of my most favorite things about living here in Japan in the springtime. So what I have is I have a black canvas. It's already been covered in liquid clear, and on top of that, I added some phthalo blue mixed with some black, so black and blue, some Prussian blue in the corners, and some sap green where I think there's going to be some land. The colors that I'm going to be using today are going to show up on your screen right about now. And with that, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is this scene is going to have the moon in it. So you need to go into some white and you have to decide where the moon is going to be. And in this painting, the moon is going to be somewhere over here. So I'm going to start here, just making some the X stroke that we use all the time. And the further I get away from the moon, it's going to get darker, darker, and darker. Until it just sort of disappears into nothing. And we're going to blend that out. Starting from the moon again, going outward. And we're just trying to remove excess. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some stars. So to add some stars, all you have to do is go into your liquid white. I keep mine down here. Go into the liquid white on your fan brush and just sort of ping it onto your canvas like that. Instant stars everywhere. It's like creating a universe in five seconds. All right. And I'm going to go back into my white with a one inch brush and I'm going to start making the moon just a little bit more defined using the circle. That's a really nice moon. And into that, just finger paint the circle up just a little bit more. There, there's the moon, the stars, everything we need in our sky. Except now we're going to need to add some clouds. So to the clouds, I'm going to use my fan brush and I'm just going to mix it with the Prussian blue and black that I use in the corners. It's Prussian blue and black. And I'm going to start adding little tiny circles. Don't stay in one place too, too long when you do a cloud because otherwise it won't be completely right. And when you do a cloud, don't think too much about the shape of a cloud. Clouds don't really look like clouds do. They sort of do almost whatever they like. And maybe there's a big cloud here over here somewhere. We have our clouds and let's go through and highlight those just a little bit. So with a new fan brush, this one's got some white on it. It's gonna go through now. Pay attention to your light source. That's gonna be today's lesson. Pay attention to your light source. In this painting, the moon is clearly the light source. So for the bottoms of these clouds, they're gonna get the light from the moon and they're going to get it more strongly closer to the moon. Okay, so start under as close to the moon as you can get and add your light source. This cloud is below the moon, so it's going to get its light source starting here. And lighter and lighter and lighter to move away. And that's the process for highlighting these clouds in a, in a nighttime scene. Closest to the moon, work away. And then with a 
any brush. Just gonna blend them. Blend everything sort of together. Pick up the clouds a little bit, fluff them. like that you have a really effective sky. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean a brush. So to clean your brush, dip it in odorless paint thinner, scrub it on the bottom, take off the excess, and beat the devil out of it, as somebody used to say. Somebody. Now I'm going to start adding some background sakura trees. So to do that, I'm going to take some white, some of that dirty white that picked up some of the blue, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of the alizarin crimson to get kind of a darker pink color, maybe a little bit more blue, Slump something almost closer to a purple. Close my brush, and then just with my corner, I'm going to start tapping in some distant Sakura trees. They're really far away, we don't have a whole lot of need to care too much about the shapes, just some general tree shapes. Those trees are out there, they're quite far away. There's a little bit of pink to them, but we can't see a whole lot of that. And depending on where you are in Japan, the color of the sakuras can be quite different. Where I'm from in Matsumoto, the sakuras are not really pink at all, they're almost pure white. And I like that color. brushes. We'll add just a little bit of land to that, so some sap green and some white. And just at the bottom, just sort of push up just a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit on the light side so it needs to be darker. A little bit darker. Kind of far away. There we go. This is like a pushing up grassy kind of stroke. off a brush. so happen that you splatter your painting, just blend it all back together again. You won't hurt anything. Just use a clean brush. So 
be lots of pretty things going on in your painting anyway, so nobody's going to notice. With that same color that we had for the background trees, I'm going to add a little bit more red to it to make it a little bit stronger. And I'm going to start adding in my tree. So this big tree, Sakura trees tend to have long branches. So I'm just going to show that by pushing like this. Almost a bit like a haircut. I, I kind of get the idea they look just a little bit like somebody had a haircut. And let it pick up color. Let it pick up color from the blues and the greens that you've laid down. They'll make your tree really quite nice. Maybe one bigger branch hangs out just a little bit lower than all the other ones. And now we're going to paint the back of the tree. For the back of the tree, Let's go with a, let's go with that dark fan brush we had. It's got lots of dark colors on it already. And we just, we're just looking for a really dark color. So I'm just gonna mix that dirty black fan brush with some Van Dyke Brown and some Burnt Umber. And I'm gonna add the trunk of my tree. Something like that. If you ever look at these Sakura trees, if you ever have a chance to, they tend to be quite short trees. They go up about maybe four feet and then they split. And the trunks can be very, very thick. Now I'm just gonna add some paint thinner. That Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to add some more branches. Maybe a little bit thinner. Most of these are going to get covered anyway with highlights, so you don't have to worry too much if they look right. Any ones that you don't like, you can just cover later on and highlight. And some of them are going to stick up out of the flowers as well. That's something that happens. Because these trees are growing in springtime. And that means not all their branches had a chance to grow flowers. Something like that. Now, we're going to start adding highlights. So I'm going to take some of my liquid white, which is hiding down here. And I'm going to add some liquid white to my titanium white. I'm just going to start adding highlights, thinking about where that moon is. And it's just a nice little tap with this brush, this oval brush. Thinking a lot about individual branches on this tree. first time I saw Sakuras in Japan was a really amazing experience for me. Um, you always see them in different media of Jap Japan, like different kind of animes, different kinds of, um, you know, TV shows, video games about fighting and things like that. Um, 
and you think to yourself like there can't really be that many flowers just on these trees and flying through the sky but I mean the truth is that that is the truth they are really really kind of everywhere and it's one of the most beautiful things you ever get to see that's probably my favorite time of year in Japan is Sakura season I took my little girl out to go see them this year. She was really, really quite happy to go see those flowers and those trees. And they were really beautiful for her. Something like that. add a little bit of lamp now so we still have that green brush that we used before and let's go and start adding some grass pushing up you want your sakura trees to look really really nice pretend that this is a place where you're going to take somebody for a picnic and you're going to be sitting right underneath that tree and all of a sudden you're going to find you just painted the most beautiful sakura tree because that's where you want to be let it get darker 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 and go away maybe there's a little bit of a bay here a little curve a little gentle curve clean brush, pull it straight down, just like this, make sure you pick up some of the stars you laid down, and then just pull from the side. Where's my knife gone? Right here in my pocket. I kept it there to keep it safe. Go back to that same dark color you used to uh, make the trunk and just sort of go in. A little bit of man. A little bit muddy. Go into some white. Color and just put in a little bit of something like that. Okay. While we're there, I'm going to add a partial reflection for this tree, so I'm going to push it in a little bit different direction here. Some, some of these are going to reflect into the water. It doesn't have to be a perfect duplicate either of what's up there, as long as it's something. Now, when we do reflections, a lot of the time I like to pull down, but if there's something there in the water that I've added, like a mountain or something, pulling up is the way to go. Just pull it up. Real gentle. You'll pick up some stringy things. Don't worry about it. Just be gentle. Beat the brush. You can probably pick up some other color. And then just real gentle. Just something like that. A little bit of splatters here and there, but you can always clean those up later. Or you can just cover it over with more trees. That's also a possibility, right? You can always just change things. Yeah. 
Painting shouldn't be a big chore. It should be something you do for fun on the weekend on the patio. <sighs> All right. Let's take some of those dark colors again, and we're going to add another tree. Maybe super dark. Add all the dark colors, the black, Prussian blue, all the brown. Roll of paint, and let's... And frame the moon that we made. Repeatedly sort of just go at it this one, just touching it. With oil paint, you can add texture. You can't do that so easily with other painting mediums, but you can do it with oil paint. And the more and more you do this, the more you sort of go through, you touch, 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 the more texture you're going to add. It's kind of like just playing it. Think about other little limbs on the tree. Touch them. This is an old tree. He used to be pretty like the one next to him, but he's just gotten a little bit older. Maybe that's his daughter, something like that. Now let's add some highlight to that tree. So the moon is here. That's our light source throughout this whole piece. So touch, touch through here. Start closer to the moon, work away, and you'll find your highlights are just about perfect if you do that. And you can also do shadow colors. Uh, a really nice shadow color sometimes is just like phthalo blue and maybe Prussian blue, blue. Blue's a nice color for shadows because shadows really ought to be kind of dark. But if they're pure black, they're just a little bit disinteresting. I'm just gonna touch in just a little bit of phthalo blue. And let's finish this bad boy off. Let's go get the, uh, the green brush we had before. And we'll just add in more grass. Now this is getting quite close, so we might want to add a bit of white to that. And just push up the grass. There might be enough paint in this whole thing to just finish this whole area. Working in kind of layers. Try not to destroy dark. There's definitely some dark in between these different rows of, of grass. Don't completely destroy it. You can fill it in a bit, but don't destroy it. You can accomplish a really nice gradient doing it like that. Maybe 
think there's a bit more highlight on this tree to add. So down here, maybe the trunk maybe just to help him stand out just a little bit better. And there's a little bit of a blank spot up there. So I can just go through and I can maybe just fill that in with some more of those background trees. Little bit of dark grass. Pull it down to reflect. Cut across. And we never really did add a water line back there, did we? So we can go do that now. And we still have a little bit of time, so maybe one more effect that we can add is sometimes it's nice to add extra water lines to really help sell the water. So you can just do some horizontal strokes. Other things you can do, you can Go into some liquid white to make sure it sticks. Go into some crimson. Maybe you can just tap in maybe some of the superb blossoms are now falling and floating on the water. But I think that's a finished painting. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to sign it. Go into some paint thinner. Use the bright red. Make it really, really thin. Twist your brush. Pull it. That gives you a sharp brush. And sign your name. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. I'll see you around again. Bye.